Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we are going to talk about the difference between a rigid panel and a flexible panel with the same power. Some time ago a user assured me that the efficiency was almost the same, that it was so practical to install on an RV or a camper van that it was not worth bothering with a rigid one. Well, okay if you want, but since I had not tested it, I did not say anything. And until now I had not been able to test and especially find two identical panels with the same power, but I finally managed to do a test with two panels of 130 watts, one rigid and one flexible. So I took some notes and we are going to talk about them in this video. We will see the limits, advantages, and disadvantages, and how to avoid being misled by certain tests. Before starting, you will find our pack of electrical diagrams in the description of the video. Also remember to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and do not hesitate to ask your questions in the comments. So here I did two types of tests, flat and tilted. So we are going to start by comparing the two 130 watt panels. Here on the left is the 130 watt flexible panel. This is of course illustrated because as you know, I have my whiteboard style of video and I like to stick to it as much as I can. So here I tried to create a drawing that shows the test to make it more visual and easier to understand. On the right then is the rigid 130 watt panel as well. As for the test conditions, it was of course a sunny day. Both panels were tested with the same MPPT charge controller, a Victor model with Bluetooth that allowed me to monitor the production in real time. The flexible panel was taped to a wooden board and the rigid panel was placed on wooden battens to simulate mounting on supports two centimeters high. Each panel produced for one hour. Result. For the rigid panel, we had an average of 79 watt hours, compared to a maximum power of 130 watts as advertised. It is already interesting to point out that you lose quite a lot when placing a solar panel flat. This gives here a little more than 60% efficiency. The last important measurement in this test is the temperature, which was recorded at 41 degrees. As for the flexible panel, from 130 watts maximum, we go down to an average of 63 watt hours in the test, so a real efficiency of 48%, but especially a temperature of 53 degrees. So what can we conclude from this simple test? The rigid panel, even when flat, reaches 61% of its theoretical capacity of 130 watts. This shows that in real non-optimal conditions, with no tilt, you naturally lose part of the production. The flexible panel, on the other hand, only reaches 48% of its capacity. The difference is explained by overheating due to the lack of ventilation. But not only that, if it is in direct contact with the roof, can you imagine? And also the plastic nature of the panel, which is less tolerant to heat, but we will come back to that later. So the performance gap gives us here nearly 20% difference between the two panels, which is quite significant. This confirms what I thought, but we still carried out a second test with the tilted version to see if the gap gets smaller. So we compared the real performance of these two 130 watt solar panels, one rigid, the other flexible. When they are tilted toward the sun with good ventilation underneath, conditions close to what we could call an ideal solar system. Starting with the rigid panel, efficiency went from 61% to almost 70% with nearly 90.4 watt hours, which is actually not that great. I was expecting much more than that, but I will come back to it later because I need to point out an important factor to consider. The temperature recorded was 44 degrees. In comparison, the flexible panel delivered an average power of 76.2 watt hours, which equals an efficiency of 58.6%. The temperature recorded was 46 degrees. In this second test, we can already see that the temperature almost balanced out between the two panels. The rigid panel takes very good advantage of the tilt and ventilation, with an efficiency of 69.5%, much higher than what was measured when flat at 61%. The flexible panel, even though it is better ventilated here and has a lower temperature, only reaches 58.6% efficiency. So it improves its performance compared to the flat position at 48%, but it still remains less efficient no matter what. And so the performance gap between rigid and flexible is now only about 15%, but still nothing to get too excited about. When looking at the results of the two tests on this chart, we expected better from a rigid panel, but we are dealing with 12 volt panels. The so-called 24 volt residential panels rise much higher in voltage and are more efficient, especially with the latest bifacial panels. Let's just say that losses are lower with higher voltage to keep it simple. Another important point in this test is that tilting clearly improves the efficiency of both panels, but benefits the flexible one more, since it suffered more from the heat when flat. But even if the rigid panel was far from being the best on the market, it still remains superior, even when both are ventilated and well-oriented. In summary, 
This 130 watt rigid panel can reach close to 70% real efficiency in ideal conditions, unlike the flexible panel, which does not go beyond 60%. Now let's go over the advantages and disadvantages of each type of panel. The flexible panel does have some notable advantages, very light and thin, easy to install. They can be glued directly without drilling discrete since they follow the shape of the roof. Practical for temporary or mobile use, easy to store, sometimes even rollable depending on the models, but be careful with the disadvantages, limited lifespan often two to five years with rapid degradation, overheating when glued, efficiency drops significantly, plastic materials, the surface yellows, micro cracks appear, loss of transparency, less mechanically resistant to scratches, impacts, bending, or even hail, a performance to price ratio that is not very interesting in my opinion. For rigid panels, the advantages are also very strong. High durability, up to 25 to 30 years, more stable efficiency, less sensitive to heat, thanks to natural ventilation, better performance to price ratio over the long term, less degradation, no yellowing like the flexible plastic thanks to tempered glass, better resistance to weather, UV, hail and wind, thanks again to very strong glass, wide choice of brands, power levels, and bifacial technologies, and above all, always lower prices since 2025. Now the disadvantages, higher weight, obviously, greater thickness, requiring a support or drilling for mounting less discreet aesthetically on the roof of a camper van. So the urban legend that flexible panels are just as efficient has not been proven in my test. Of course, this was not what you would call a scientific test, but still, we could get different results with other panels. It would always be possible to present a test in a way that looks better for flexible panels. But I do not really believe that. Tell me what you think in the comments. What have you noticed on your side? The only sure thing is that I could find a rigid panel more efficient than the one I tested. With mine, when tilted properly, I managed to reach almost the nominal power, but only in optimal conditions, which is difficult to maintain in real life.